year and I don't yeah, know. We, we verified with local bookshops in the city of Cavan yeah. that they will order the book for yeah. anyone who, who needs it or wants it, it was really and we, will, great. we will continue to promote it yes. yeah absolutely thank you so much and uh, we will go on and hear uh, your presentation now. perfect thank you thank, thank you, you. Good evening to all of you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, here in Kevin. <coughs> Very likely it's the first one presentation or discussion connected to the Kurds. <laughs> I don't know, but probably. Um, so uh, we are doing a tour in, in several cities. It's a third meeting. And uh, yes, I'm here because I'm one of the three authors of this book uh, called Revolution in Rojava. I live in this city called Diyarbakir, uh, with the old name Ahmed. It's at the Tiger River, and Rojava is more or less here, this area, and uh, north. And uh, Kurdish like the people there. And we are, let's say, from the same broader movement, which we call Kurdish Freedom Movement. We were there in 2014, uh, just before the uh, terror organization Islamic State took over Mosul. Then we, uh, me and the others, we were again there and we stayed continuously in contact and so we wrote this uh, book. The book which describes the, yes, how the revolution happened, how it was before, how it happened, and especially what's the current political situation. These borders have been drawn uh, after the First World War uh, One. Since then the status didn't change, but in the last 40 years the Kurds have started to struggle more, especially armed struggles. The regions, the Kurdish regions, are economically quite underdeveloped, the poor, the state didn't invest it, and the strategy was to exploit these areas but not to give them uh, sources or possibilities. Um, yes, they are the poorest in Syria. But it changed everything in 2011, when the Syrian uprising uh, started. Uh, it was an uprising for us, but it very fast it changed into a civil war, where different <coughs> regional powers and international powers intervened. Um, yes, and they uh, tried to already establish uh, councils, committees at that time, not party only, but also to do some work on the ground, but it was difficult. And they had, when the Syrian uprising started, so 2011, and around 1,500 political prisoners from this movement. And this movement said that 2011, this is important, <coughs> that we will not, that will not support in any way the Syrian government, the Ba'ath regime. So they said, we must, uh, there will come a war very soon, it will achieve one very soon also Rojava, and the Syrian state uh, will probably not attack us too much, let's use the space and organize ourselves, set up people's councils wherever it is possible, the different neighborhoods of different cities, organize life, uh, establish committees, different areas for conflict resolution, and they did it in the first months, year, then the people saw they are doing work, and so they became stronger power slowly, uh, step by step. Uh, we try to organize ourselves along these uh, principles, and these principles are like overcoming nation state. We refuse your nation state, absolutely, and we say more society, less state. And evolving as much as possible uh, social groups, cultural groups in the society in a de democratic way. This leads, will lead to an empowering of people. This is important. So the first uh, criteria is democracy. We say democracy, but we mean radical democracy or participative democracy, direct democracy, council democracy, basis democracy or so. <coughs> Second is uh, the liberation of women which is very crucial for us. It's a discussion of more than 25 years. And the liberation of women is important. It's the first class which has been oppressed. So we must start especially there. 
it was time that women started to organize themselves and became now a strong power. Um, the second, the third one is ecological approach. This completes this approach. I mean, actually, it says think about how we live, how we organize our life, how we produce, consume, and so on. Who does it? Who controls it? And this issue, protect, uh, conserving nature, is also part of it. This is an ecological approach. And in connection with this, a communal life, communal economy. This is the fourth approach. And then came the summer 2012 where the student state became weaker and weaker and they retreat some of their troops from uh, Rojava and the Kurds decided in a short way, okay, now it's time to liberate the cities. And how it worked, the people came together in thousands or ten thousands. We, uh, they said, okay, we are here, we want to rule our city, you can go, leave your weapons here, you can go, we will not continued with almost all of the cities within a few days. So then the most part of Rojava was liberated. Then it continued the organizing, the, they started to build up communes on the lowest level. We have a city, not only in a neighborhood, with several thousand people, or 10 or 15, they went to the residential streets, with, let's say one, two streets, and they established a commune commune with 100 or 200 households and they break down the self-organizing to lower part to include more people and structures organize themselves so all the everything is a process you must understand it, it continued the process in 2013 the attacks against Rojava started established by some parts of FSA Al-Nusra, the Al-Qaeda group or the Islamic State organization they could def uh, repel the attacks, then started a new process where they wanted to include more parts of the society. In some regions there are a lot of Arabs or Syriacs and uh, others, Turkmen, uh, they wanted to include them. And they did it uh, after they discussed several months and they prepared a social contract. And then in January 2014 declared the democratic autonomy. So the idea was to involve people and also to seek for a status within Turkey internationally. The number of communes is raising, has raised in the last years, but also <coughs> the structure came stronger and they take decisions and so on. About the women liberation, very short, um, what is, uh, there's a political organization called Congress Star. They are the party which go to women, establish women councils. We have in each level a, a non-general assembly or council or so, but they're always an autonomous structure. And they do this and uh, YPG is the, uh, are the armed force of Rojava, the defense forces which fight against Islamic State, together with YPG, the general one. Uh, if it, something affects the women, they are the side. They have a special role. And about the education, I don't say much. Uh, Kurdish has been introduced, it was completely forbidden, and the people couldn't write in Kurdish, but they all started with, to write also. And um, cultural diversity is a very crucial, important element. The, the Syriacs are one of the uh, Christian groups there, and in former times, 50 years, they were, the number was much more higher. But they are still there, half of them have left after the start of the war in 2011. But they are still there and they are joining in the majority the democratic administrations. And they are part of it. In their own neighborhood, they have their own uh, defense forces, security forces. You have you had poor areas, <coughs> no big companies, a few companies, they, the bigger companies have left. And uh, the people have started to, especially in the last two three years, to establish co-practice. And they have established mainly by the communes and people's councils. So they say, where's the need? Let's develop it, our economy. Asaish are the security forces. Maybe you would say police, where well, we don't say police. 
and there's all they have people from the local are involved and they have a inside themselves an election system. They elect their responsible persons every year and they have a responsibility to the councils and structures and uh, whatever there exists. Then, um, not this March, the federal system of Northern Thuria and Rojava has been declared. This is a new step where the three uh, cantons come together, but also people from more liberated areas, mainly Arab, they and uh, cantons and other actors came together and made this declaration and said we must form a structure for all these regions. This is our model. We want this autonomy, strong autonomy for northern Syria. This is what we want for our region. We are part of Syria. We don't want all, uh, autonomy. doesn't mean different state, but we are part of it. What we have developed in our region is uh, should we consider it as a model for all Syria. It's not only for us. And to overcome this conflict of where hate has been spread, hundreds of thousands of people have been killed, the only solution can be this model, in our view. And they must take it in a serious way. Either they, they can make war, but they have not so much power at the moment. And then, then we have the U.S., which actually supports militarily, not politically, Kurds or Rojava. It's a very crucial point we have achieved, and uh, the struggle goes on. Thank you for listening. Okay.